Audrey Elizabeth Hale, was born on March 24, 1995. She was the first born to Ronald and Norma Hale, with just three years separating her from her younger brother, Scott. Growing up, Audrey was known as a quiet kid, often seeming to be in deep thought. She was reportedly diagnosed with autism as she grew older, but was deemed to be high functioning. Growing up in a Christian household, Hale would attend the Nashville Covenant School, a private Christian school founded as a ministry of Nashville's Covenant Presbyterian Church. While not yet confirmed, there are indications that Hale may have been subjected to molestation while at the school. A Courthouse News Service article highlighted that John Perry, one of the individuals behind the founding of the Covenant Presbyterian School, was involved in the abuse of a young girl within the church. This began in 2007 and lasted for three years, during which the church covered up the incidents. The victim's age, ranging from 11 to 14 during the abuse, aligns with Audrey's age during that period. While a 2012 police investigation found the allegations against Perry were sustained, no legal actions could be taken due to the passage of the Statute of Limitations. After leaving the Covenant Presbyterian School, Audrey attended Isaiah T. Creswell Middle School, where she was part of the Lady Comets basketball team. Audrey attended the Nashville School of the Arts High School. She was part of a state champion girls 4x400 meter relay track team for Martin Luther King Jr. High School in 2013. Given that the Nashville School of the Arts didn't have a track team, students had the option to audition for the MLK team. Hale later secured the title of Most Athletic in the Nashville School of the Arts yearbook. She reportedly began having issues with her parents around this time after coming out as lesbian. Once she graduated high school, she enrolled at the NOSI College of Arts, earning a degree in illustration and graphic design in 2022 and finding work as an illustrator and graphic designer shortly after, according to her LinkedIn profile. Hale won Most Improved and Class Participation Awards from NOSI, according to web posts by the college. It's been hard, but it's also been an amazing experience when it comes to developing my creative talents and growing as an artist. Audrey would be heartbroken as two of her former basketball teammates were killed in car accidents in an eight-month period before the shooting. 27-year-old Sydney Sims tragically lost her life in August of 2022, and 29-year-old Mark Lachelle Hamilton passed away in February of 2023. The passing of Sydney Sims was exceptionally devastating for Audrey. Former classmates mentioned that Audrey admired and idolized Sydney, though there is no proof that the two ever had an actual friendship. Another former basketball teammate claimed that Audrey exhibited obsessive behavior towards Sydney, constantly stalking her when the two parted ways and went to different high schools. Audrey Hale even posted a TikTok video dedicated to Sims in February of 2023 on a now-deleted account. While undergoing treatment for a non-specified emotional disorder, Audrey Hale had legally purchased multiple firearms that she kept hidden in her home. Audrey's parents knew of at least one weapon she had bought and sold, and believed that was the extent of it. Norma Hale was against Audrey's ownership of firearms and even appeared to be a gun control activist who once urged friends on Facebook to sign a petition calling for keeping firearms out of schools. In another post, Norma shared a petition urging lawmakers to make large capacity gun magazines illegal. Biologically born as a female, Audrey had begun identifying as a male on social media shortly before the shooting introducing herself as a transgender male named Aiden. Approximately three weeks before the shooting, on March 2, 2023, Tennessee's Governor Bill Lee signed into law a bill that bans gender-affirming medical care for children identifying as transgender or non-binary. The new legislation prohibits the use of hormone treatments and puberty blockers typically prescribed for gender dysphoria. Additionally, this law bans specific surgeries which were already uncommon in Tennessee. On March 27, 2023, Audrey left home with a red bag carrying three guns and drove to the Covenant School, arriving at 9.54 a.m. At 9.57 a.m., Averiana Patton, a former middle school basketball peer of Audrey, checked her phone and discovered a message from Audrey on Instagram. In the message, Audrey expressed her plan to end her own life, adding that Patton would hear about it through the news. Patton immediately called the crisis hotline, which told her to get in touch with the authorities. She then made a 911 call. 
So I'm just trying to see, can anybody, I just don't want it on my conscience. If somebody can go check on her. The only thing I have is her Instagram. Okay, unfortunately, we can't send anything up without an address. I mean, can I give you her Instagram? Can y'all, like, find her, that, track her that way? I can, I can send an officer to speak with you and see what he can do, but there's nothing much we can do. At 10-11, armed with two rifles and a handgun, Hale shot through a glass side entrance and walked into the premises. By 10-13, the police began receiving calls about an active shooter. Are you in a safe spot right now? I think so. Okay, we're getting a lot of help started, okay? Um, we've had two other callers saying this as well. Um, so what, are you hearing gunshots now? No. no. Are you guys locking the school down? Arriving officers were informed by a teacher about the lockdown status of the students and the absence of two. By approximately 10.23, officers entered the building As they were securing the ground floor and ensuring the safety of the present staff and students, they heard gunfire from the level above. Five officers zeroed in on Hale at 1025, and in the encounter, two of them fired a total of eight rounds. I think it's upstairs. It sounds like it's upstairs. By 1027, just 14 minutes after the first 911 call, Hale was no longer a threat. Throughout the shooting, Hale fired over 150 shots, killing three nine-year-old students and three staff members. Following the shooting, investigators searched Hale's house. Evidence found included two shotguns, one of which was sawed off, a detailed map of the school with potential entry points, and a manifesto. On April 3, 2023, Police revealed that Audrey's shooting had been planned for several months. Hale is suspected of having scouted out another location to attack, but reconsidered due to heightened security on the premises. At the time of this recording, the motive for the shooting remains unclear. Metro Nashville Council's Courtney Johnston revealed that the FBI informed her that they would not publicize Hale's writings due to their portrayal of a blueprint of total destruction, which could potentially motivate other shooters. On April 28, 2023, Governor Bill Lee declared an impending release of the writings. However, following lawsuits filed by both the National Police Association and the Tennessee Firearms Association to access these writings, the MNPD decided to postpone their release due to pending litigation under their lawyer's guidance. Wishing to preserve its confidential details, the Covenant School made moves to get involved with both lawsuits Additionally, a group representing 75% of Covenant's families contended that even a censored version of the writings should remain confidential. A judge consented to the request made by the parents and the school. Evelyn Deakhouse was described by family as a constant beacon of joy to her family. She was a radiant, sparkly soul with an ever-present twinkle in her eye. At a vigil service held at Woodmont Christian Church, Evelyn's sister cried as she said, I don't want to be an only child. William Kinney was a beloved son, brother, nephew, and friend, eagerly awaiting the upcoming baseball season. He stood out as unfailingly kind, gentle when the situation called for it, quick to laugh, and always inclusive of others. Hallie Scruggs was the only daughter of Chad and Jada Scruggs. Hallie is remembered as a vibrant little girl who was well-loved and loved others. She loved ninjas and unicorns and enjoyed playing soccer and basketball. Catherine Kuntz gave her life to protect the students she loved. Catherine was devoted to her family, her friends, and especially the children she cared for. Mike Hill is remembered for his loving nature, his culinary skills, 
and his faith. Pastor Jim Bachman said the hearts of the congregation were aching for the man they called Big Mike. He was big, he was strong, and he was tough, Bachman said, but he was also soft and tender. Cynthia Peake, known as Cindy, had an unwavering faith in Christ. She was known as a strong believer. Cindy was a pillar of the community and a teacher beloved by all her students. Her favorite roles in life were being a mom to her three children, a wife to her husband, and an educator to students. 